Setting up and adjusting the floodlight properly is really important for how it's going to fit and perform with your gun. So in this quick start guide, we're going to go over the important details for fitting your floodlight to your gun and adjusting it to the performance that you want. First, it's important to note that the shock cord plays a key role in this whole process. It's an active component to how the holster fits and how you can adjust it. You'll notice that your floodlight came with a gray shock cord and a red shock cord. The two separate colors are not there for aesthetic preference, but for a very specific purpose. The gray shock cord should be suitable for most guns. The red shock cord is longer and therefore is used for larger handguns such as the P320. To swap the shock cord out, you may want to reference our floodlight assembly video. Once you place your gun into the holster, you'll notice that the retention starts out very loose. This is intentional and should give you the perfect starting point for fitting your specific handgun to your new floodlight. We want to first start by adjusting the shock cord by grabbing the washer and placing it in the center fold. For slimmer guns such as a Glock, Beretta, 1911, or 2011, we recommend starting with both sides of the cording in the center fold. Make sure that you pull the washer all the way through the center loop instead of wrapping them around the edge. At this point, you'll want to assess the retention of the holster on body. We do not recommend using the shake test to assess whether or not your retention is adequate as this can lead to unreliable and inconsistent results. When we place the holster on body, there is added pressure from the belt, which will inevitably increase retention. If we test retention off body, then we miss this key part of the process and can end up with undesirable levels of retention. Note also that you'll want to avoid fishing the gun into the holster as this can result in you muzzling your pelvis. The best way to avoid this is to index the light in the holster first and then rock the muzzle inward like so. After you've tested retention, you might find that it needs more or less retention. For less retention, remove one side of the shock cord from the centerfold. If not enough retention, you can then move on to evenly tightening the screws on the mod wing half a turn at a time until you start to hear and feel more of a click into the holster. Avoid tightening the screws on the mod wing so tight that the rubber spacers begin to over compress. You should be able to get adequate retention without over compressing these spacers. The key part of this process is to begin with the shock cord and ensure you're tightening each screw on the mod wing evenly.